Hello and welcome to another product review. Um, in this case, a little bit more of a preview. In just a minute, going to be taking a look at the new SE Laser Strike knife that I just received um, and compare it to a couple other uh, knives that I have in my collection. But first, I wanted to give you a little bit of information um, about myself um, and about this video, and I'll explain why I'm doing that in just a second. In the comment section below, um, you will see an outline that I've made that has time code and a little bit of description next to it. I've done that more for repeat viewers. Um, if you're like me and you're interested in a product, um, uh, either because you just find them fascinating or because you're considering purchasing them uh, yourself, uh, you often uh, revisit videos and look at um, commentary or view parts of a video that you found beneficial on YouTube. And um, I do that myself, and a lot of times I find myself kind of scrubbing um, through the entire video, trying to find the parts that, that were most appealing or most beneficial to me, or trying to you know answer a question that I thought a video might have resolved, and I can't remember exactly where it was. So if you're kind of like some of us out there, a little bit impatient, you want to jump to the part that specifically pertains to something you may be more interested in, or if you're repeating um, the view and you want to go right to an area that you found helpful, hopefully that will help you out. So just click on the time code next to the description and it should take you to that point in the video. Um, my experience is it works really well, but you may have to wait for the entire video to load. So maybe hit play, pause it, and then once the uh, the timeline's completely filled and it's ready to go, uh, hit one of those and it should jump you to that particular part of the video. So hopefully that will be helpful uh, to all of you. Um, now a little bit about myself. Before I get into the uh, the knife review, I want to tell you a little bit about what I do and don't do with my knives. Um, this is more or less not to say that what you or don't do, uh, what you do or don't do with your knives is good or bad or right or wrong. It is more or less to explain uh, what I use them for to help you decide if this knife might be right for you. Um, for example, I'm not a hunter. Um, I'm more of a backpacker, uh, camper, casual outdoorsman. Um, I don't hunt large game. Um, I don't even do a lot of fishing. Um, it's just not something that, that kind of I grew up doing, uh, nor is it something I'm, I'm particularly interested in, at least at this time. So if you're into field dressing deer, skinning small game, um, I would recommend that you look at uh, other YouTube videos out there. Uh, for example, uh, Virtue of Ice. Uh, I believe the guy's name is Dr. Wako from Japan. He is a a large deer hunter and he has probably the largest knife collection um, on e on YouTube and he is very knowledgeable and there's hundreds of videos that he has that will really satisfy probably any question you could possibly have about most knives edges sharpening um, tactics you name it do sorry for that long inter introduction there but I wanted to explain where I come from um, with my knife use in my collections uh, so that that will help you get an idea of, of kind of like where my angle is on knives. So let's get to the point uh, where a lot of you've come to view this video for is the SE Laser Strike. And here it is right here. Um, so question number one that I see often asked in forums that I had myself that I did find answered but uh, sometimes isn't quite as upfront as we would have hoped is will it work with the Molly sheath? that um, is provided by Essie or that you can obtain from uh, Essie? And the answer is obviously yes. Um, I tried to finagle this into the one designed for the four, <clears throat> excuse me, the SE4, and it's the whole um, lining is just a little bit off and this Kydex sheath is really, really wide and um, the whole alignment's really wide. <clears throat> Sorry about that. And so it doesn't quite line up. Um, so they're not trying to scam you on selling you the, the larger um, Molly uh, sheath here. Uh, it is required. Um, so if you already have an SE5 or 6, um, then that uh, Molly back will work just fine with this one. Um, if you're wanting to obtain a new one, then you will obviously just need to do that because obviously taking um, you know one Kydex um, sheath off and putting another one on is kind of a pain and if you're like a lot of people when you carry multiple knives with you because you want to test them or you just enjoy having them around um, you're going to need more than one molly back so there's uh, a, a question i see asked a lot is will it work with the um the molly backs and it will as long as you get the five or the six now 
Obviously, this doesn't come with it. Um, this is extra. Um, they range between um, probably like low 40s, um, upper 50s, depending on where you purchased them from. Um, I got the knife and the sheath or in the molly back um, from KnifeWorks out of Columbia, Louisiana. Uh, great packaging, uh, no problems with their service at all, excellent. Um, I have ordered uh, my four, which I'll show you in a minute. I ordered that knife from uh, the Knife Connection, also a great company. Um, a couple dollars more, never had any problems with them either. Um, they just didn't, they are actually where I went first, to be honest with you. They just didn't have any in stock at the time. So here it is. Uh, we'll go through the breakdown of it in a second. I want to show you a little bit about more about what it does come with. And uh, you get the, if you're familiar with SE, you get the instruction booklet that shows you kind of what all the stuff is uh, on the knife and, and what everything's for. Um, you're going to get, um, let me just dump this out here. You're going to get your kind of survival card here. And uh, you may be familiar with this. It kind of gives you some basic um survival um, guidelines and instructions and stuff and uh, kind of a hard laminated uh, card and it's helpful to keep in your wallet or throw in your backpack uh, if, if need be. Um, this is actually the knife uh, bag itself um, and then um, here is the clip that does come with the knife and this is a plastic belt clip. Um, I can't flip it over and show you but basically it attaches right here so you can see about how high the knife um, would sit, there's the top of the clip right there, so it'd be about right there. So it's kind of a high ride. Um, the knife would sit a little bit higher on your hip using this. Um, it's not bad, it's actually pretty well designed. This top part is a little loose right here, and because of this kind of a sharp uh, tip right here, um, through depending on what type of um, clothing you're wearing, but when I, when I hike, I wear kind of a lighter, more breathable, um, uh, shorts or pants, uh, whoop, sorry about that, white balance got a little bit off. Uh, I wear a little bit lighter, thinner pants, and uh, unless it's really cold out, and I found that this dug into my hip a little bit right here, and I just thought it was uncomfortable. Um, I'm kind of a fan of the, the Molly backs anyway, so I ordered it in advance. I put this on to try it, and then immediately took it off because it's not for me, and uh, you get your uh, spacer, um, rubber spacers uh, for this, and everything that you need good to go. Um, so that's what comes with the knife. That um, This along with um, obviously the Kydex sheath and uh, the knife itself, which we'll look at in a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and undo this and fold this out of the way so that we can kind of look at the general product. Um, I wanted to show you it with the back so I didn't take it off. But anyway, here we go. Um, so on the outside of the case, if you're familiar with SE, very nice uh, Kydex sheaths. Uh, they're among my favorite um, that I've had the opportunity to mess around with at all. Very well built, um, very solid. Uh, never had any issues with the one on my four. Um, you get a little bit of paracord here along the base um, with um, you know a tie, and then you get this washer. Which if you've looked at all um, information about the uh, SE uh, laser strike, then you'll know that this is to remove the screws in the handle area and access the um, survival steel, sorry, the uh, ferro rod, you know, and the um, uh, cotton uh, tender bundles basically that are in there. Um, the good thing about this is it's literally just a washer. So if this, if you were ever out in the, in the outdoors and you were messing around and this got cut um, or this came loose or anything happened and for whatever reason you lost this you can go pick up an entire bag full of them for less than a buck at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, so nothing fancy there, very very practical and um, it actually works really well. We'll get to the stuff here in a minute but um, it's, it's better, it's great to have on there in case you don't have um, you know a multi-tool or something. Um, you have this sliding lock um, that tightens, um, in case you're not familiar, I'll show you this a little bit, hopefully you can see it um, in the video, but as you slide this lock up, it tightens the two pieces of the Kydex. So as you slide it, these come together in locking the blade in place. Now the knife does have um, a catch lock built in right here, so it's extremely safe, but this is just extra. It will keep that from, I mean, you have to put a lot of tension to get that out. So. We're gonna slide that down, and that's pretty much everything that comes on the outside, so now let's take a look at the knife itself. 
Okay, uh, hopefully it's not too highly reflective, this. Um, this is actually a black uh, desk in uh, our office here, and it was really reflective. And with uh, these dark materials, I was afraid you wouldn't be able to see it. So I've laid down a, a piece of uh, reflector board in hopes that that will help you. Um, so just to get the sheath completely out of the way, basically what you would do is take this washer, uh, being very careful because the knife is, of course, very sharp, uh, putting it in here and twisting and that will un that will loosen um, the screw. Now, another concern people have had is that there are flathead screws on both sides. And um, the great thing about this is Essie is apparently, um, and if you've done your, your own handle modifications on any previous Essie models, um, you know that um, one of the things that, that a lot of people do is use like Loctite or super glue on one side. So loosening um, this screw won't spin the other side necessarily. You just kind of hold it with your finger, um, loosening it, and then you can actually use your nail and get your finger in there and unscrew it. There's no problems. And the, the stud that goes through the tang and through both scales will remain on the screws from one side. So you don't have any problems um, there. So. Um, I will talk to you a little bit about my opinions on the knife and stuff in a second. I want to take you on a quick little tour, if you will. Obviously, a funky looking um, SE knife. Um, it's taken me a little bit of time to get used to. It's growing on me. I think that's been kind of the same um, sentiment that a lot of people have had. Uh, most SEs, um, for example, I'll get the four out here in a minute, have a flat spine and a traditional blade belly. Um, the edge is identical. Uh, to anything that you would get on another SE knife, the same powder coat, same everything. It's very, very much like an, uh, a larger, uh, different dynamic uh, four. Um, same blade dimensions with regard to thickness, uh, same type of edge, obviously, except for the difference when the belly <clears throat> goes up to the tip. You got a little bit more of a spear style point here, although you only have, <clears throat> sorry, one side of the the uh, steel sharpened. Um, but this is the the overall design it kind of has this slope up here at the top and then um, kind of more of a it has been defined more of a spear point but you could look at it as kind of like a drop point or something like that to a degree it's got this kind of gradual rounded angle um, and uh, you've got uh, good uh, jimping here on the top if you're familiar at all with se um, you know what I'm talking about. It's it's very well spaced. It's a larger area. It's rounded. Um, you're not going to, you know, bleed or get your fingers cut at all um, being on that area. Um, and there's this kind of taper here along the top of the handle area that goes into this. And that's a very good spot for your thumb, too. Um, so you don't have this hard drop down and then into the jimping air. So I actually like this. I think it's very, very comfortable. Um, but there's your overall design. Um, a lot of features that you'll find on every SE knife from the three up, you got the finger groove here, um, and then you've got um, the blade, obviously, jimping here, full tang. This is skeletonized, um, which we'll talk about in just a second. You've got the lanyard hole here at the back, um, two versus, I think, a normally it's, a, it's three, um, three uh, um, screws that hold the scales onto uh, the tang. Um, but this is skeletonized. Uh, in the middle, there's a loop here that's um, empty. It's cut out, and that's where the ferro rod and the uh, cotton um, fire starters are held. And then you have uh, a bow drill uh, socket here um, that you would use kind of as the top. And then as you you know, spin uh, the bow drill, this would work as a recess and kind of a holding spot on the top. The instructions do tell you uh, to keep the sheath on uh, when you're doing this so that if it slips, you're not sliding down there and, um, you know, cutting your finger. The, the good thing about this knife versus a lot of uh, the other SEs out there, particularly the, the three and the four, is these, uh, I believe they call them quillions, but these little... Uh, uh, quillons or whatever, these little notches that protect, kind of give your hand a place to rest um, so your fingers don't go forward or back. Um, the three and four just go right into the pommel um, and there it's actually exposed. And this is more like a modified, um, you know, four style uh, scales that you would get. Um, I did order some um, tiger stripe um, 
I think TKC uh, handle upgrades for my four, but I didn't install them yet because I wanted to use a comparison in this video and I wanted to use what comes from the factory. Uh, so you can see um, how things look with regard to thickness and length and stuff. So you have a front and rear uh, quill on here that it, it allows your, your uh, index finger and your pinky finger to set comfortably, at least in my opinion. I do have um, a tough um, kind of fat uh, hands, short fingers. Um, so that's what I mean, kind of like blades are very much um, unique to each individual, depending on, um, you know, how God designed your hand, basically, will will give you kind of a different feel on this knife. But I've heard a lot of positive things about it. And by far, it's, it's my my favorite handle um, yet that I've, I've um, experienced from Essie. I, I really do like it. Um, and I like this... Uh, material on the scales as well. It's a little bit more textury. It feels like it's uh, got a better grip to it and I don't feel that it's going to fail me at all. Um, you know, in the wild, I don't feel like that it's going to become slippery when wet. Again, more of a review of um, functionality and stuff. Hopefully in a couple weeks, I plan on going on a backpacking trip um, here in a few days if the weather holds off and then if uh, that's the case. I will hopefully have some more field experience uh, with this to talk about maybe next time if you'll find that helpful. So uh, I've got number 95. I know a lot of people really get interested in the serial numbering on these. Uh, normally it's on the pommel down here, but since this is completely disguised, it completely hides uh, the end. They've uh, put the numbering on the blade itself. Uh, back to what I mentioned, I think I skipped this part. Um, on the other SEs, the modified handles, which I'll show you in a future video, they actually give you this rear quill on right here, this rear area where you have kind of a a rest at the butt of the handle down here. And it kind of is comfortable in, in my regard. Now, if you wanted to do a lot of extended use, you know, like this and use back here, I think that this still rests well on the ring finger. Um, if you needed to get back to the back, maybe have a lanyard around here for doing some chopping. Um, it's still very comfortable to me. Uh, I don't have a problem with this at all. But the modified um, scales that you get from the knife connection, I believe some other manufacturers out there make them, um, because the pommel, uh, the, sorry, the pommel's exposed, it actually encloses over it and the, the butt of the knife will not have the tang visible. Uh, not that it's a big deal, but if you did need to use this or some sort of hammering, like getting a tent stake into the ground or, or um, any type of uh, rear striking at all, um, this uh, notch here is definitely helpful to keep the hand from going this way. And because this really thick steel is um, exposed, that could be beneficial depending on what you plan on doing with your knife. Um, I was going to jump into the SE4. I do want to talk about um, the survival innards, if you will. I'm not going to take it apart on the video because it's a little bit time consuming, but I will throw a photo I took with my iPhone up. Uh, you undo the screws in the handle and basically you have a recess in the scales and a skeletonized center. And that gives you access to your ferro rod and your uh, cotton uh, uh, tender starters, basically, that we talked about a minute ago. And I have some people, um, I've seen some people mention in some forums that that seems it's really kind of painstaking to get in there. The way I look at it is I think the way that it was intended to be used is this is for survival purposes. Only uh, if you plan on starting all your fires with what's in here, then then that would obviously be a real pain. Uh, but I take a, a fire steel outside uh, of my knife. I mean, this is the first knife I've ever had that had this built in. So obviously most of us have a ferro rod at our disposable outside, at disposal outside the tang. This would be more or less, if last resort, this is where I would go to get this. And then you're going to have that ubiquitous complaint that people have about SE is that there's no place to, f to strike the fire steel except on the blade. That's still true with regard to this knife that actually comes with a ferro rod. Um, so you get people going, I don't understand. They're including a fire steel, but no place to strike it. Again, I view this more as an emergency, a last minute type of thing. So I would strike it with the base of, of the blade, to be honest with you. That's where it would be exposed. There's nothing in here in the skeletonized area that would give you access to exposed uh, carbon steel um, that you could strike with. And you're just going to have to go um, for the blade or use something that you may you know, have with you. But if it's just that really unique, unfortunate survival scenario where it's you and this, you have enough to get you by here. So if you want to use your knife as your fire starter in general 
a lot of people enjoy just using ferro rods. Even it has nothing to do with what's inside the handle. I agree. I enjoy starting fires that way as well. Then you're going to have to either file off part of the back or use part of your blade with regard to this knife. That predicament still remains with the powder coat. Okay. Um, there's uh, supposedly some stainless steel models coming out, not particularly of this one as of yet, but the SE4. Um, and I think of the Azulas have got some um, SS models coming out that may resolve that problem. I'll show you how I resolved it in another knife in a minute. Um, a couple things about this that are different from other ones. Let me go ahead and spin this around here and I'll bring out the SE4. Um, let's look at this first. Let me get this out. Um, the if you're not familiar with different um, scales, um, there's a huge size difference in these sheaths and molly systems. Actually, this is still kind of bent up. Um, so a, a lot larger and, and wider. Um, so just be prepared for that. I don't, I don't particularly have a problem with them. They're, they're very well built, but that's just to give you, uh, you know, kind of an indicator of what you're getting with the sheaths and the molly systems. So let's just compare this, move this up here a little bit, to the SE4. Now, as you can see, um, this one does have um, a, uh, I've put a convex edge on this knife. I tried to keep these as original as possible. I didn't put the new scales on it to show you, but it does have a modified, um, obviously, edge here. Now, I got the sharpened clip point, and it's not sharp right now. I've dulled this down. Um, it's great for spearing and things like that. But again, I ordered this particular blade with the sharpened clip point and then exposed more of the steel, and I, even though it's further out from the lever arm, um, I use this to strike fire steel, and I haven't had any problems with it at all. In fact, every fire started my last backpacking trip, I used this knife with a fire steel. So with re, in, as opposed to ordering a knife and exposing part of it here, now the corners of these thick carbon steels are very, very good for getting leverage and, and you know um, striking uh, sparks, but I found this works just fine. And um, it would be maybe a disadvantage in batoning. That's why I kind of dulled it off and just used this as a kind of a, a pointed edge, but not a sharp edge. Okay, you can see I'm doing this right here and I'm not bleeding. Um, so when it comes to, I did do a little bit of batoning with it. It did eat into the wood a little bit in the baton a little bit, but nothing significant. Again, personal choice. Um, you guys do what you want. But so you can see the edge is a little bit different on this one. But I, I left it to try to do a size comparison. Um, so from the butt of the knife to the tip of the knife, you can see that this knife is about an inch longer. Um, SE says that this one's 10 inches, this one's uh, 9 inches. Um, the uh, If you compare the finger grooves in the front, the coulon or whatever it's called here, um, you get a slightly longer knife end. <clears throat> the point's still longer. What's interesting is if you compare the finger guards, um, you start to really, if you know where the finger guard is, you start to really see how much longer this handle is with the tip still longer. Um, the other thing that I wanted to point out was this finger groove. Um, an issue that I and some other people sort of had with the uh, four and some other knives is that the, let me get this out of the way, that the finger groove right here, basically on this knife, it's the choil right here, is not significantly deep. Um, the other problem is it puts your finger right up against the, blade tip. You can see right here, this is a sharp point in the, this has been ground off from stone sharpening, but right here is where that edge that's significantly sharp um, comes into play. And when you're using um, the finger groove, okay, it's right up against that sharp point. And it's not, I've never had it slip. This is a really good handle, um, but you could see where that could be a concern for some people. Um, and um, it's could be viewed as not safe. This finger groove is significantly deeper, okay? I can get almost my whole finger in there. And again, I have shorter, fatter fingers, but it's significantly better than with the SC, okay? I can actually feel that tip right there on my finger. Uh, I'm sorry, with the four SC, the same brand, right? Okay, so right here, you can see how much deeper that is it's significantly more comfortable to me. In fact, I can see myself using the knife in this arrangement quite a bit. Uh, back here, it's fine, honestly, for batoning. Uh, this gets your finger further away, not just from the blade, but gives you more exposure to baton, even if you wanted to get 
through you know a thicker piece of wood up in this end and try to get the blade all the way to the far end of the wood you could do that all right so the the finger groove is significantly deeper and right here you have in my what is in my opinion more of a true choil you have this this uh the blade comes up it kind of dips up then you have a recess here and then you have an actual you know almost like a second quill on or whatever it's called a finger groove to protect your finger from going forward on the blade so it's significantly safer if that's been a concern for you okay so there's the size dimensions the different um the differences there um for thickness there's the end again the pommel on this one's exposed the end of this one's exposed but this is really noticeable right here um the four is thinner um, and uh, significantly shorter with regard to, um, let me get that in the light for you there, with regard to thickness. Um, the jimping starts in a similar spot, but like I said before, this one's a straight spine, so it goes straight into the choil, and this one has a higher handle line that dips down into the jimping area. So it's comfortable here, and it's comfortable here. This is a very, very comfortable hold for me. Um, so honestly, if I'm doing any type of basic camp chores, um, if I decide, you know, doing some notching, uh, making steaks, um, you know, even cutting food, anything maybe besides batoning or anything where I need to get significantly further away from the knife tip, this is going to be my go-to hole. That's just going to be how I'm going to use it. Extremely comfortable um, compared to other SE knives I've had. And I, of course, I own the four. Um, this handle is just really thin. Now the modified uh, scales that I've ordered for this one, I'll put on show you another video. We'll make it similar to this, but the choil, I mean, sorry, the finger uh, guard here, the finger groove is still not going to be as deep. It's still going to be up against the blade. And there's no real way to correct that without grinding more metal away. So that's to give you an idea. Um, as you see the edges, the tips obviously very, very different. Let me get this back here on the white so you can see it. Um, it takes some getting used to for sure, um, but I really, really like this knife. Um, I've only been able to play around with it in the backyard. Um, haven't done as much as I plan on doing in the outdoors with it. Obviously, you can see this one's been beat up a little bit more. Um, so they do get used by me uh, quite a bit. Um, but, you know, I've, I've explained my uses for them, so you kind of make your decision based on there. You get a lot more steel in the blade. Um, and the great thing about, of course, I got the sharpened clip point, but the thickness of the spine is continuous all the way to about here it starts to taper to the point so this is going to be a lot more durable for for uh, batoning or, or any type of heavy duty um, uh, punishment that you would put on it again an, an unsharpened clip point se4 would give you thickness to right about here but overall there's kind of some side let me move it this way just in case you see this is being helpful to you you can see the significance all over um, and this material I've never had a problem with it slipping in actual field use um, even when it's been wet way better way better um, so my general assessment with compared to the SEs and, and overall use for myself is as follows you've got in my opinion the longest blade that I particularly would want to carry for backpacking uh, and general outdoor use I don't want to go real real heavy um, I, sorry I'm make sure that I'm using this microphone because I'm in an office that tends to echo. So I'm trying to make this as non cruddy as possible. I'm sorry this video is going a little bit long, but I wanted to kind of um, do some explaining a little bit. Um, but it's it's heavy. Um, this weighs in at about nine and a half ounces versus this one's about 7.4 ounces. So there's a noticeable uh, weight differential there. Um, but it doesn't, the skeletonized handle um, really helps balance this pretty well. Um, I love the material that the handle's made out of. I love the thickness of the spine. The handle is exceptionally comfortable in my opinion. The finger group is more than useful. This is going to be, like I said, my go-to handling of this knife. Um, if you were to go this way and do some uh, downward striking with it, um, this is going to you know, protect you uh, uh, fairly well from slipping um, toward the blade end. It's thicker. The handle's thicker than the four. Uh, I, I like it a lot. I like the slope toward the jimping. Um, the, the blade design is growing on me, to be honest with you. I think this is a, if you will, sexier knife. I, I think that the traditional flat spine blade 
um, of the the other SEs is just really an awesome looking, uh, fierce looking knife. This is going to be very very practical if you're into um, uh, doing uh, you know bow drill stets or anything like that. This type of tip is probably going to be more suitable for you with regard to um, getting into wood as far as a kind of a drill manner. Um, this also has the bow drill um, socket here. The skeletonized handle with the, if needed, as I'm treating it, survival uh, tender and a ferro rod inside. Uh, it's five inches long. I think the blade cutting length is four and a half inches. Um, because I can get further away, I could actually feel really comfortable using this if I did need to do some heavy chopping or batoning. It's not going to give you the weight or the uh, fierceness of like an SE5, uh, but this is kind of like a marriage, if you will, between an SE5 and SE4. You get a longer blade, a thicker tang all the way down, a unique tip, the survival innards, a uh, comfortable, thicker, longer handle, the best um, finger groove I've, I've used on an SE yet, um, an actual choil that's protective right here, and a really good sheath. So I, I like this. I think for me, all around, this is the best knife for me, for mild bushcrafting, camping, backpacking, and you know, heaven forbid survival situation, this is going to be my favorite knife. I'm not going to worry about this knife getting beat up. Um, I, it's not so beautiful that I don't want to go and do hard work with it. Uh, it, it looks like it was meant to do that type of work. And so I'm not going to, you know, worry about having, um, you know, $105 knife getting brutalized because I know this will stand up to the task. My SE4 has been. Um, I've put this through the paces. I've pried a little bit. You're trying to get, you know, bark off a tree or any type of thing like that. Um, trying to get into things, even using it sort of as a pry bar. These things are durable as all get out. And I think you'll find that a universal claim um, on YouTube and in forums. So I love this knife. And I'm hoping, and I, I don't have any doubts, but I'm hoping that I don't find anything in the field that makes this any type of less significant on uh, the food chain, if you will. Um, this is a bigger knife and a slightly heavier knife, but I will go to this one over my four now, um, in my personal opinion. So there is a heavy comparison with the four because I think it's as closest of kin. The six is entirely too long. The five, uh, different handle construction, way thicker, way heavier. So I think this is kind of, like I said, a marriage between a five and a four. Um, closer to the four, but it gives you some benefits and some special little features that you you didn't really get before and as long as you can get over the design which some people just love and it like i said it's growing on me um, this might just you know be the ideal uh, se knife for a lot of people out there so let's compare it to a couple other knives i have real quick again um, this is kind of supposed to be a, a tour and comparison of of this oh one more difference not it's a big deal you probably noticed it but the logo the the four has the new se logo right there let me try to get the light for you and the laser strike has the name of the blade obviously right here and it has more of the randall's uh rat uh randall's adventure and training logo with the skull and the cross knives um, which is kind of cool it makes it gives a little bit of uh, identity difference over the essies um, but anyway kind of a relevant point but interesting nonetheless um, so let's let's compare this to some other knives that i have uh, first the mora bushcraft force um, love this knife for about 30 bucks uh, and you can find them for you know mid to upper 20s low 30s um, I ordered this one actually off Amazon because they had it prime shipping and I really wanted to get it uh, Scandinavian grind um, this is the uh, stainless steel um, very comfortable handle not as awesome in a in like a pull cut or whatever um, because of this uh, this um, protrusion right here and because it's not wood you actually can't grind that off but uh, again this is an Amora um, Bushcraft Force review but just a little bit of input on that very comfortable handle uh, textury rubber um, very very light blade um, I think this thing weighs only like five ounces or something very very light to knife um, if I just didn't want to have to worry about a knife's integrity at all as far as if it busted just buying a new one this is what you could consider a disposable knife um, I really do like this knife a lot the sheath is plain plastic uh, 
But again, not a, not a moral review, but a lot of people out there are moral lovers and are familiar with these sizes. So I'm going to show it to you here. This is uh, Quillon to Quillon. So you can see that the handle extends further when you compare um, the two at that particular point. Let me hold this up. Maybe it'll be a little bit easier to see like this. If you go butt to butt, um, then you get the choil and finger groove to extend further on the five. The blade is way more robust on the five, obviously. Um, it's not a, it's not, let me see if I can do it this way. It's not a full tang knife um, by any means. I believe it comes to about here. It is nestled in there pretty well. Um, but, you know, again, I would make this work <laughs> in a survival situation if, if it's what I had with me. But um, this is a good slicer. Uh, it's extremely lightweight. It's disposable. I'm not worried about it. Would I pry or baton heavily with it? No. Um, but that's not really what it's designed for. But there's your size comparison. Kind of if you're familiar with the more bushcraft, again, this is the bushcraft force. Um, you know, really good knife, but different kind of intended use. So let me put this up here. And the last one I have, and I haven't seen any reviews of these on, um, on YouTube, so I may throw something together for this. I got this more as a slicer, whittling, bushcraft, mild bushcraft type nine, but mainly I got it because I thought it was beautiful. This is the uh, Hella GT, um, and I'll do a comparison there. If I, if I put the bolster of this next to the choil of this one, you get a similar kind of feeling. This is a five inch blade. The Hella is a five inch. Uh, and this is four and a half cutting. Uh, again, the belly is different. This goes up more to, this is a flatter spine. Uh, this is more tapered, sort of like a spear. So we mentioned earlier, the belly on this one gets uh, fat and then kind of rounds up. I think they've labeled this as a hunting knife. It's an incredible slicer. Anyway, beautiful knife. Um, I haven't seen anything on YouTube or much on the, on the web for it. So maybe I'll put something together just a little bit on this knife. Extremely light, like 5.3 ounces, I think is what it is. Um, same blade length. Uh, again, a more of a stick tang. Um, you can see it comes out a single point here. And this is a, uh, um, what is this called? I'm, I'm drawing a blank, but I think it's um, um, birch. Um, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank right now. Anyway, I wasn't prepared to talk much about this, but size comparisons <clears throat> and differences here with the heli. Um, a similar size knife, like half the weight, almost half the weight. Um, this has got a pretty generous um, thick spine on it for, for a Hella knife. Um, it's a lot sharper, but the Scandinavian edge, a Scandi, uh, I don't know if you can see that. I'm trying to get my finger up near the tip. Um, the Scandi uh, edge is beautiful. And, and like I said, it's scalpel sharp. Um, but, you know, this isn't going to take a lot of, of chopping abuse very well. Um, I am not going to baton with it, even in a review. I bought this knife because of, con of more collective nature and genuine beauty. Now, I'll take it backpacking with me on a shorter trip and, and mess around with it for sure, but I'm not going to put it through the heavy duty use that it wasn't really designed for. I'm not going to be prying. I'm not going to be batoning, hacking, stabbing. Um, <coughs> I, would, I would, I guess, if need be. Uh, in a survival situation, again, I can make this work, but I bought it because I just love the knife. Maybe I'll do a a little bit of review on this one too because there hasn't been any on YouTube yet. But anyway, those are the four knives that I have that I care to show you. I have a couple of buck knives and stuff that I got just to mess around with sharpening. Um, nothing um, significantly probably worth um, your time. And hopefully you didn't find this too boring. Uh, hopefully there was enough comparisons and handling of the laser strike to um, show you a little bit um, about um, how it would handle. Again, the closest thing that I have in my set to it is going to be the four. Um, the laser strike is better, in my opinion. Again, to each their own. When I first set up this video, I didn't intend to, to show um, the cutting performance of the knives necessarily. I mean, um, it was more about um, a look at the knives and size comparisons and, and what have you. But again, I'm going to, I plan on putting a convex edge um, on this knife. I just, I prefer it. Uh, for sharpness and strength, um, but I went and got a piece of, of printer paper, and I thought with maybe a larger, uh, more, you know, that's a pretty thin one right there, with a larger piece of paper, you could see better what it was doing. Um, you know, no problems through the point. 
is plenty sharp. I feel that it, it grabs a little bit more on paper. You know, there's a wiggle test for you. You know, it's sharp, okay, right out of the box. Um, some of the other ones that I, I had here was, um, this is the four. Again, I've used, I put a convex edge on this, and uh, I haven't stropped it since I went through last time, but let's see how it performs on a full-size piece of paper. Um, it's, it's sharper than the, the five. It doesn't, it doesn't snag on the papers quite as much. I mean, you can see it here. Let me see if I can get... Let's pull a little bit there, but a little bit of a snag down here, which is where I was doing the, the bush crafting. I was doing some feather sticks. I can feel it right there a little bit, but anyway, this knife is when the edge is is cleaned up on it, it's it's extremely sharp. I can the tip is no problems really toward the tip, but right about the middle of that belly, there's a little bit of a snag. But again, very sharp. Uh, Mora. Scandinavian edge, very sharp knife uh, out of the box, but um, when I stropped it, it was much sharper. Um, I mean, this one for, you know, I can just hold it with a couple fingers and no problem. That's completely off there. So very, very sharp knife. Um, see how it does a wiggle test. You know, no problems. Very, very sharp. Uh, again, for slicing, absolutely. Great knife. Um, the Heli GT, this is the sharpest knife by far um, that I own. Uh, again, a little bit of light stropping when I took it out of the, the packaging, but just the, that, the Heli Edge is, it's a razor. I mean, it is, it is unbelievably sharp. Um, I mean, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to, to convince you with any type of knife. You know that they have different purposes, but I mean, it's, it's sharp. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. So, I mean, it's no problems at all. So, um, these knives all sharpen very, very well. Um, I have no doubts that when I put a uh, convex edge on this and uh, strop it up, that it's going to be significantly sharper than it is right now. Again, out of the box, you're not going to have any problems with it. I'm holding it way near the end of the of the blade here too. So nothing to do with balance you can see it's cutting Oop. trying to get this up here give me a little bit more let me just get rid of that um holding up here by the the finger groove it's sharp okay all the way to the tip it's extremely sharp again sc4 with the convex edge on it is sharper it doesn't bite nearly as much. The edges are cleaner. I've just got a little bit of a nick um, right here in the middle, um, probably from doing the wood abuse that I was doing the test the other night. Oh, oh. uh, please don't hold me accountable for saying that the knife does something that it doesn't do um, it, with regard to what you're hoping it will do. Um, I know people online, uh, again, that have used SE blades, particularly with a modified edge, in hunting and love them. Um, and if you want a heavier duty, larger, uniquely shaped hunting knife, maybe this will work for you. Um, I just don't know that as well. Um, if you don't mind carrying the weight versus something like a Mora or a Heli, which I, I love both of those manufacturers and both of my knives significantly. When you hold one of these, the robustness tells you this knife was designed for more than slicing and, and doing the things that Mora and them are good at. I'm not discounting them in any way because, again, if that's all I had, I'd make it work. But given the option, this is going to be my go-to knife for outdoor use. Um, the blade's right for me. The shape is unique, but right for me. The finger groove is right for me. The handle is good for my grip. I like that it has the fire still in there. Um, if need be, my plan is to never take it out. I opened it, took a picture to show you guys and just make sure one that they didn't forget to put it in there. Uh, but I hope that I never have to use that. I'll use a, another fire steel. The jimping is good. The weight to me is good. I don't mind a heftier knife. Um, so if you like a, a meatier knife, a weightier knife, a knife that you plan on being brutal with, um, 
and you don't want to spend a lot of money at, let me tell you something at a hundred and I think I paid like $105 from KnifeWorks. I think they're about 110 at Knife Connection and other places have them, um, online. Uh, this is a steal in my opinion, exceptionally well-made, made in the USA. If you've dealt with SE before, you know, they're good knives. I love this knife. And I can't wait to use it in the field. Um, I, again, I'm planning on going on a, on a four or five day backpacking trip here pretty soon. Hopefully, I'll put it to use if I can get some video from like my iPhone um, while I'm out in the in the the woods. Then I'll bring that back. If not, I will be certain to try to give you an updated description. Again, I hope this is helpful. Again, more of a, a tour of the knife and my opinions on what I've used with it so far. I wanted to give you a comparison. Um, so you have the information you need to compare it um, and you can kind of seeing it in motion and, and, and compared to other knives sometimes is helpful. So I'm going to wrap the video up with one last stack. Let me move this up here, sorry. Um, here, SC Laser Strike or SELS, SE4, space these out a little bit better, Hella GT. More of bushcraft force. Again, this is not a test comparison between the two about which is better, but a size comparison for you. If you're familiar with any of these other knives, it'll give you a general idea. Um, a little bit of differences, in my opinion, in construction and how I see uh, their intended use with. Um, regard to my collection. So I hope you found this helpful. Um, again, feel free to revisit the video later and look at the, um, the outline that's below and jump to the segment that you find most helpful. Uh, and I hope to be able to get a video together in the next uh, week or two about how it performed uh, out in um, the wilderness, which is where obviously it's going to be really at home. Uh, so until then, I hope you found this helpful and thanks for tuning in.